Otto Neurath, German, not T, the 10th of December 1882 to the 22nd of December 1945, was an Austrian philosopher, philosopher of science, sociologist, and political economist. Before he fled his native country in 1934, Neurath was one of the leading figures of the Vienna Circle. Topic: Early life. Neurath was born in Vienna, the son of Wilhelm Neurath (1840–1901), a well-known political economist at the time. Helena Mijerka was his cousin. He studied mathematics in Vienna and gained his PhD in the Department of Political Science and Statistics at the University of Berlin. He married Anna Schapire in 1907, who died in 1911 while bearing their son Paul, and then married a close friend, the mathematician and philosopher Olga Hahn. Perhaps because of his first wife's blindness and then because of the outbreak of war, Paul was sent to a children's home outside Vienna, where Neurath's mother lived, and returned to live with both of his parents when he was nine years old. <laughs> <laughs> Career in Vienna Neurath taught political economy at the Neue Wiener Handelsakademie New College of Commerce, Vienna, until war broke out. Subsequently, he directed the Department of War Economy in the War Ministry. In 1917 or 1918, he became director of the Deutsches Kriegswirtschaftsmuseum German Museum of War Economy, later the Deutsches Wirtschaftsmuseum at Leipzig. Here he worked with Wolfgang Schumann, known from the Durban for which Neurath had written many articles. During the political crisis which led to the armistice, Schumann urged him to work out a plan for socialization in Saxony. Along with Schumann and Hermann Cranald developed the program Cranald Neurath Schumann. Neurath then joined the German Social Democratic Party in 1918-19 and ran an office for central economic planning in Munich. When the Bavarian Soviet Republic was defeated, Neurath was imprisoned but returned to Austria after intervention from the Austrian government. While in prison he wrote, Anti Spengler, a critical attack on Oswald Spengler's Decline of the West. In Red Vienna, he joined the Social Democrats and became secretary of the Austrian Association for Settlements and Small Gardens Verband für Siedlungs und Kleingartenwiesen, a collection of self-help groups that set out to provide housing and garden plots to its members. In 1923, he founded a new museum for housing and city planning called Siedlungsmuseum. In 1925 he renamed it Gesellschafts- und Wirtschaftsmuseum in Wien Museum of Society and Economy in Vienna and founded an own association for it, in which the Vienna City Administration, the Trade Unions, the Chamber of Workers and the Bank of Workers became members, then Mayor Karl Seitz having acted as first proponent of the association. Julius Tandler, city councillor for welfare and health, served at the first board of the museum together with other prominent social democratic politicians. The museum was provided with exhibition rooms at buildings of the city administration, the most prominent being the People's Hall at the Vienna City Hall. To make the museum understandable for everybody, Neurath worked on graphic design and visual education. In the late 1920s, graphic designer and communications theorist Rudolf Modley served as an assistant to Neurath, contributing to a new means of communication, a visual language. With the illustrator Gerd Arns and with Marie Riedmeister who he would marry in 1941, Neurath created Isotype, a symbolic way of representing quantitative information via easily interpretable icons. At international conventions of city planners, Neurath presented and promoted his communication tools. In the 1920s, Neurath also became an ardent logical positivist, and was the main author of the Vienna Circle Manifesto. He was the driving force behind the Unity of Science movement and the International Encyclopedia of Unified Science. During the 1930s, he also began promoting isotype as an international picture language, connecting it both with the adult education movement and with the internationalist passion for new and artificial languages, although he stressed in talks and correspondence that isotype was not intended to be a standalone language, and was limited in what it could communicate. Topic exile Topic Netherlands During the Austrian Civil War in 1934, Neurath had been working in Moscow. Anticipating problems, he had asked to get a coded message in case it would be dangerous for him to return to Austria. As Marie Riedmeister reported later, after receiving the telegram Carnap is waiting for you, Neurath chose to travel to The Hague, the Netherlands, instead of Vienna, to be able to continue his international work. He was joined by Arns after affairs in Vienna had been sorted out as best they could. 
His wife also fled to the Netherlands, where she died in 1937. Topic British Isles After the Luftwaffe had bombed Rotterdam, he and Marie Riedmeister fled to England, crossing the Channel with other refugees in an open boat. He and Riedmeister married in 1941 after a period of being interned on the Isle of Man Neurath was in Anchen camp. In England, he and his wife set up the Isotype Institute in Oxford and he was asked to advise on, and design isotype charts for, the intended redevelopment of the slums of Bilston, near Wolverhampton. Neurath died, suddenly and unexpectedly, in December 1945. After his death, Marie Neurath continued the work of the Isotype Institute, publishing Neurath's writings posthumously, completing projects he had started and writing many children's books using the Isotype system, until her death in the 1980s. Topic work Most work by and about Neurath is still available only in German. However he also wrote in English, using Ogden's basic English. His scientific papers are held at the Nord Hollands Archief in Harlem. The Otto and Marie Neurath isotype collection is held in the Department of Topography and Graphic Communication at the University of Reading in England. Topic philosophy of science and language Neurath's work on protocol sentences tried to reconcile an empiricist concern for the grounding of knowledge in experience with the essential publicity of science. Neurath suggested that reports of experience should be understood to have a third person and hence public and impersonal character, rather than as being first-person subjective pronouncements. Bertrand Russell took issue with Neurath's account of protocol sentences in his book An Inquiry into Meaning and Truth p. 139 ff, on the grounds that it severed the connection to experience that is essential to an empiricist account of truth, facts and knowledge. One of Neurath's later and most important works, Physicalism, completely transformed the nature of the logical positivist discussion of the program of unifying the sciences. Neurath delineates and explains his points of agreement with the general principles of the positivist program and its conceptual basis, the construction of a universal system which would comprehend all of the knowledge furnished by the various sciences, and the absolute rejection of metaphysics, in the sense of any propositions not translatable into verifiable scientific sentences. He then rejects the positivist treatment of language in general and, in particular, some of Wittgenstein's early fundamental ideas. First, Neurath rejects isomorphism between language and reality as useless metaphysical speculation, which would call for explaining how words and sentences could represent things in the external world. Instead, Neurath proposed that language and reality coincide—that reality consists in simply the totality of previously verified sentences in the language, and truth of a sentence is about its relationship to the totality of already verified sentences. If a sentence fails to concord or cohere with the totality of already verified sentences then either it should be considered false or some of that totality's propositions must be modified somehow he thus views truth as internal coherence of linguistic assertions rather than anything to do with facts or other entities in the world moreover the criterion of verification is to be applied to the system as a whole see semantic holism and not to single sentences such ideas profoundly shaped the holistic verificationism of Willard van Orman Quine. Quine's book Word and Object p. 3f made famous Neurath's analogy which compares the holistic nature of language and consequently scientific verification with the construction of a boat which is already at sea. We are like sailors who on the open sea must reconstruct their ship but are never able to start afresh from the bottom. Where a beam is taken away a new one must at once be put there, and for this the rest of the ship is used as support. In this way, by using the old beams and driftwood the ship can be shaped entirely anew, but only by gradual reconstruction. Stanovich discusses this metaphor in context of memes and memeplexes and refers to this metaphor as a Narathian bootstrap. Neurath also rejected the notion that science should be reconstructed in terms of sense data, because perceptual experiences are too subjective to constitute a valid foundation for the formal reconstruction of science. Thus, the phenomenological language that most positivists were still emphasizing was to be replaced by the language of mathematical physics. This would allow for the required objective formulations because it is based on spatio-temporal coordinates. Such a physicalistic approach to the sciences would facilitate the elimination of every residual element of metaphysics because it would permit them to be reduced to a system of assertions relative to physical facts. Finally, Neurath suggested that since language itself is a physical system, because it is made up of an ordered succession of sounds or symbols, it is capable of describing its own structure without contradiction. 
These ideas helped form the foundation of the sort of physicalism which remains the dominant position in metaphysics and especially the philosophy of mind. Economics In economics, Neurath was notable for his advocacy of ideas like in kind economic accounting in place of monetary accounting. In the 1920s, he also advocated Volsozialisierung, that is, complete rather than merely partial socialization. Thus, he advocated changes to the economic system that were more radical than those of the mainstream social democratic parties of Germany and Austria. In the 1920s, Neurath debated these matters with leading social democratic theoreticians such as Karl Kautsky, who insisted that money is necessary in a socialist economy. While serving as a government economist during the war, Neurath had observed that as a result of the war, in-kind calculus was applied more often and more systematically than before. War was fought with ammunition and with the supply of food, not with money, i.e. that goods were incommensurable. This convinced Neurath of the feasibility of economic planning in terms of amounts of goods and services, without use of money. In response to these ideas, Ludwig von Mises wrote his famous essay of 1920, Economic Calculation in the Socialist Commonwealth. For Neurath, war economies showed advantages in speed of decision and execution, optimal distribution of means relative to military goals, and no-nonsense evaluation and utilization of inventiveness. Two disadvantages which he perceived as resulting from centralized decision-making were a reduction in productivity and a loss of the benefits of simple economic exchanges, but he thought that the reduction in productivity could be mitigated by means of scientific techniques based on analysis of work flows etc. as advocated by Frederick Winslow Taylor. Neurath believed that socioeconomic theory and scientific methods could be applied together in contemporary practice. Neurath's view on socioeconomic development was similar to the materialist conception of history first elaborated in classical Marxism, in which technology and the state of epistemology come into conflict with social organization. In particular, Neurath, influenced also by James George Fraser, associated the rise of scientific thinking and empiricism, positivism with the rise of socialism, both of which were coming into conflict with older modes of epistemology such as theology which was allied with idealist philosophy, the latter of which served reactionary purposes. However, Neurath followed Fraser in claiming that primitive magic closely resembled modern technology, implying an instrumentalist interpretation of both. Neurath claimed that magic was unfalsifiable and therefore disenchantment could never be complete in a scientific age. Adherents of the scientific view of the world recognize no authority other than science and reject all forms of metaphysics. Under the socialist phase of history, Neurath predicted that the scientific worldview would become the dominant mode of thought. Topic publications Otto Neurath wrote several books and articles. Books, A Selection, 1913. Serbines er Folge im Balkankrieg, eine wirtschaftliche und soziale Studie. Wien, Manns, 1921. Anti Spengler. München, Kalwi Verlag, 1926. Antique Wirtschaftsgeschichte. Leipzig, Berlin, B. G. Teubner, 1928. Lebensgestaltung und Klassenkampf. Berlin, E. Laub, 1933. Einheitswissenschaft und Psychologie. Wien, 1936. International Picture Language, The First Rules of Isotype. London, K. Paul, Trench, Trubner & Co., Ltd., 1936-1937. Basic by Isotype. London, K. Paul, Trench, Trubner & Co., Ltd. 1939. Modern Man in the Making. Alfred A. Knopf 1944. Foundations of the Social Sciences. University of Chicago Press 1944. International Encyclopedia of Unified Science. With Rudolf Carnap, and Charles W. Morris eds. University of Chicago Press, 1946. Philosophical Papers, 1913-1946. Marie Neurath and Robert Cohen, with Carolyn R. Fawcett, eds. 1973. Empiricism and Sociology. Marie Neurath and Robert Cohen, eds with a selection of biographical and autobiographical sketches by Popper and Carnap. Includes a bridged translation of anti-Spengler, Articles, A Selection, 1912. The Problem of the Pleasure Maximum. In, Cohen and Neurath, eds, 1983-1913. The Lost Wanderers of Descartes and the Auxiliary Motive. 
in Cohen and Nurith 1983-1916. On the classification of systems of hypotheses. In Cohen and Nurith 1983-1919. Through war economy to economy in kind. In Nurith 1973, a short fragment only 1920A. Total socialization. In Cohen and Ubel 2004 1920B. A system of socialization. In Cohen and Ubel 2004 1928. Personal life and class struggle. In Nurith 1973 1930. Ways of the scientific world conception. In Cohen and Nurith 1983. 1931A. The current growth in global productive capacity. In Cohen and Ubel 2004. 1931B. Empirical sociology. In Nurith 1973. 1931c. Physicalismus. In Scientia, Revista Internazionale di Sintesi Scientifica, 50, 1931, pp. 297 to 303. 1932. Protokollsatz, Protocol Statements, in Erkenntnis, Volume 3. Repr. Cohen and Neurath, 1983. 1935a. Pseudorationalism of falsification. In Cohen and Neurath, 1983. 1935b. The unity of science as a task. In, Cohen and Neurath 1983. 1937. Die neue Enzyklopädie des Wissenschaftlichen Empirismus. In, Scientia, Revista Internationale di Sintesi Scientifica, 62, 1937, pp. 309 320. 1938, The Departmentalization of Unified Science, Erkenntnis 7, pp. 240 46. 1940. Argumentation and Action. The Otto Neurath Nachlass in Harlem 198k.41. 1941. The Danger of Careless Terminology. In The New Era 22 145 50. 1942. International Planning for Freedom. In Neurath 1973. 1943. Planning or Managerial Revolution. Review of J. Burnham, The Managerial Revolution. The New Commonwealth 148-54 1943-5. 1943 Neurath Carnap Correspondence, 1943-1945. The Otto Neurath Nachlass in Harlem, 223. 1944b. Ways of Life in a World Community. The London Quarterly of World Affairs, 29-32. 1945a. Physicalism, Planning and the Social Sciences, Bricks Prepared for a Discussion v. Hayek, 26 July 1945. The Otto Neurath Nachlass in Harlem 202k.56 1945b. Neurath Hayek Correspondence, 1945. The Otto Neurath Nachlass in Harlem 243 1945c. Alternatives to Market Competition, Review of F. Hayek, The Road to Serfdom. The London Quarterly of World Affairs 121-2 1946a. The Orchestration of the Sciences by the Encyclopedism of Logical Empiricism. In, Cohen and. Neurath 1983 1946b. After Six Years. In, Santes 5-77-82 1946c. The Orchestration of the Sciences by the Encyclopedism of Logical Empiricism. In, Cohen and. Neurath 1983. 1946. From Hieroglyphics to Isotypes. Nicholson and Watson. Excerpts. Rotha 1946 claims that this is in part Neurath's autobiography. Topic. See also. Incompleteness theorems. Kurt Gödel. Ship of Theseus. Topic. References. Topic. Further reading. Cartwright, Nancy, J. Cat, L. Fleck, and T. Ubel, 1996. Otto Neurath: Philosophy Between Science and Politics. Cambridge University Press. Cohen, R. S. and M. Neurath, eds. 1983. Otto Neurath: Philosophical Papers. Rydell. 
Cohen, R. S. and T. Ubel, eds. 2004. Otto Neurath, Economic Writings 1904-1945. Kluwer Duto, Andrea Alberto, 2017. The Pyramid and the Mosaic. Otto Neurath's Encyclopedism as a Critical Model. Footprint. Delft Architecture Theory Journal, No. 20. Matthew Eve and Christopher Burke, Otto Neurath, From Hieroglyphics to Isotype. A Visual Autobiography, Hyphen Press, London 2010 Sophie Hochhausel Otto Neurath, City Planning, Proposing a Sociopolitical Map for Modern Urbanism, Innsbruck University Press, 2011 ISBN 978-3-902-81107-3. Holt, Jim, Positive Thinking, Review of Carl Sigmund, Exact Thinking in Demented Times, The Vienna Circle and the Epic Quest for the Foundations of Science, Basic Books, 449 pp. The New York Review of Books, Volume 64, Number 20, The 21st of December 2017, pp. 74 to 76. Krautler, Hadwig, 2008. Otto Neurath. Museum and Exhibition Work: Spaces Designed for Communication. Frankfurt, Berlin, Bern, Bruxelles, New York, Oxford, Vienna, Peter Lang International or Verlag der Wissenschaften. Namath, E., and Stadler, F., eds., Encyclopedia and Utopia, The Life and Work of Otto Neurath 1882-1945, Vienna Circle Institute Yearbook, Vol. 4. O'Neill, John, 2003, Unified Science as Political Philosophy, Positivism, Pluralism and Liberalism, Studies in History and Philosophy of Science. O'Neill, John, 2002, Socialist Calculation and Environmental Valuation, Money, Markets and Ecology, Science and Society, LXVI, 1. Neurath, Otto, 1946, From Hieroglyphs to Isotypes. Simons, John, Pombo, Olga, Torres, Juan Manuel eds, Otto Neurath and the Unity of Science, Logic, Epistemology, and the Unity of Science, 18, Dordrecht, Springer, 2011. ISBN 978-94-007-0142-7 Vasagian, Nader, 2008. Otto Neurath, The Language of the Global Polis. Nye Publishers. ISBN 978-90-5662-350-0 Sondner, Gunther, 2014, Otto Neurath. Eine politische Biographie. Z. Solne, Vienna. ISBN 978-3-552-05676-3, German, Danilo Zolo, 1990, Reflexive Epistemology and Social Complexity. The Philosophical Legacy of Otto Neurath, Dordrecht, Kluwer Topic External links Shalizzi, C.R., Otto Neurath, 1882-1945. Includes references and links. Gerd Arns Web Archive with more than 500 isotypes Bibliography Pictorial Statistics Mundanium in Netherlands Article discussing Gödel's incomplete theorems as a refutation to Neurath and the Vienna Circle's logical positivism Austrian Museum for Social and Economic Affairs Österreichisches Gesellschafts- und Wirtschaftsmuseum